capabilities that are unusual for, for this little small group. And we get to talk to people everywhere all the time. And they can sit down in their living room right now on their computers. And I, there's one brother, I'm going to talk about him, he a young brother in Akron, Ohio. Now he's not young anymore. He sent me a picture of what he does on Sabbath. He takes his iPad and hooks it up to his big giant screen television, and he watches the service. And we thank God for it. And so those are the things that we should take advantage of. But when you're here in Memphis, and you're here able to get here, get here. Amen? The, the technology is not an excuse. The technology should not be used as a handicap. It should be used in case of emergencies and used also to help spread the gospel. So we thank God for those who are joining us via those miracles of technology. And we want to ask you all to join us at this time for a word of prayer so we can ask God's spirit to be with us. So let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, again, in the name of Jesus, we approach your most holy throne, Lord, as humbly as we know how. Father, on our knees, thanking you so much for the privilege. Thanking you so much, Lord, for being our God and allowing us to be your people. We thank you so much for this, your holy day, Lord, and we ask at this time that your Holy Spirit would lead. It would guide us in all your truth. Father, that you would open up our ears, that you would open up our hearts, that you would have us to speak the word and your word only. Lord, so we may hear and obey. Father, we also pray for those all over the world today who are doing exactly the same thing. We ask that your spirit would be with the ministers all over this world, Lord, that they may speak with power and authority and with the power of a living God to affect the people so they may also do what you have them to do. Lord, please forgive us for the sins we've committed against you, Lord, and we ask that you be with those, especially today that are under persecution for your name's sake. Father, we ask for strength, comfort, and encouragement even in their hour of need. And in the name of Jesus, we pray and ask all things. Amen. Once again, happy Sabbath, everyone. Last week, we needed the heat. Now it looks like we need the air. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, this, this weather is very, very interesting. But we... Th they're going to need a doctor soon, that's right. In the book of Galatians, chapter 1, if we could, I mean, chapter 3, if we would start today, we have been in a very trying, trying set of weeks, and it's taken its toll on us. And not the fact that we, it took us on us at first physically, but it took a toll on us spiritually. And I remember the scripture that said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And we had lost our merry heart. And we started to, to have cracks, and the, and, the, and the enemy of souls came, and we ended up sick. And we were sick because we didn't have a merry heart. And so as we watch people and talk with people and pray with people and counsel with people, it gets a little heavy sometimes. And, 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 and when you are discouraged because of whatever your, your eyes thought would happen that didn't happen, it takes a lot out of you. But we thank God for his reviving Holy Spirit because it comes back when you need it the most. And we had one of those weeks, and I was asking God, saying, Lord, why? Why is this the condition of your people? And he said, go to Galatians chapter 3. Because I needed an answer. Because we were getting a little discouraged. But he, he gave us this answer. In verse 1 of Galatians chapter 3, he said, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? And we looked at that. I said, okay, Lord. He said, this brother was having issues. He had preached to the church of Galatia a lot. He had been, visited them a lot. He had shown many miracles there. And, and, and he, he asked this question. He said, who has bewitched you? What caused you? You've already seen Jesus. You've seen us talk about Jesus. You've seen the power of Jesus. But why are you not obeying the truth? And the word that came was, we are bewitched. 
We're bewitched. We know what bewitch, bewitch means, right? We are under a spell. We are, we are literally being bombarded by sorcery because this is what the state of Galatia was. There's a lot of witches involved. You remember Simon in the book of Acts? He was known for being a sorcerer. And so he found God, and, and, and then all of a sudden, he started walking around, got baptized and everything, and, and all of a sudden, he saw the power of the Holy Spirit, and Simon forgot something. He said, Give me, let me pay you so I can have that power. So witchcraft and sorcery was, uh, was, uh, was, was uh, 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 all over during this time. And God said, we're bewitched. We have forgotten about the sorcery of the enemy. And do we believe that? Do you believe that the enemy is using sorcery on us even at this moment? Amen. We see it too often. We see it too often, and what the, so, the enemy of souls wants to make sure happens is this. If, if, if because of, with this sorcery, he, 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 God gives us this example here in uh, 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 Samuel, 2 Samuel, I believe it is. No, 1 Samuel, chapter 15. He gives us this example, and we know this particular scripture, but remember, the sorcerer, the enemy of souls, is the one who's casting these spells upon us. I know we think of spells as, you know, uh, bewitched, uh, you, know, you know, some innocent stuff. But there's some literal stuff going on. If you had a man walk in here right now who was a witch doctor, and he came up to your children, and he started throwing chicken bones at them, and then sprinkling them with chicken blood, what would you do? It would be on. <laughs> you, would, you would at least step in between the chicken bone man and your children, wouldn't you? Why? Because you know there's something evil about this. And this man is trying to do evil to my children. If a husband, if someone, some, 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 some person came in, some lady came in and, and, and with a bag of dust and started, you know, sprinkling dust on your wife, you know, and saying some incantations and stuff, you would do something about that, wouldn't you? Because you understand that's some evil going on here. That's some, that's some sorcery going on here. We got to get that out of here. Oh, I wish they would come like that. But there's no more gooba dust in the bag for us. They come differently now, don't they? It's the same spirit. It's the same purpose. It's just in Haiti they have the chicken bones. In America they have other things. But the sorcerer is alive and well in America today. And God was, in 1 Samuel, God was sharing with us, verse 15, the sorcerer, this is the ultimate goal of the sorcerer. Let's, let's go to verse 22 of 1 Samuel chapter 15. It says, And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as, a, as iniquity and idolatry. He said, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. He was talking to Saul through Samuel, but he was trying to tell Samuel, he said, look, it, it, the, the goal of the sorcerer is to get you to rebel, to get you to, 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 to not obey the voice of the Lord. That's the whole mission of the sorcerer. And he's doing a pretty good job. He did a good job on Saul, didn't he? Saul stopped listening to the voice of the Lord. And we know the history of this particular account. God told him, don't bring any of this stuff back from these evil people's land that I have allowed you to conquer. But Saul did what? He brought it back because of the people. He said because of the people. The sorcerer got him. And it cost him the kingship and it cost him his life. And there was no fairy dust, there was no chicken bones, there was no, in, there was no uh, 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 circle and a pyramid, uh, you know, five-pointed star, none of that happened. But the sorcerer still got so, because the sorcerer wants to get us. The sorcerer wants to make sure we disobey. The sorcerer wants to make sure we are practicing witches. And what did Christ say about witchcraft here? Rebellion is his witchcraft. So when we rebel against God's word, we are doing what? Practicing witchcraft or sorcery. We okay with that? All right, we okay with that? Let's keep going. We are under attack 
on every side. Everywhere we go, there's sorcery. See, we always talk about and try to, by the grace of God, explain that the fight is up here. It's in the spirit world. And that's where the sorcery is. It just manifests itself down here. It uses the agents here to get you to be affected by the spirits of the enemy on every side. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Christ was trying to teach back here in Deuteronomy why it was a bad idea to practice witchcraft. Matter of fact, he said, I don't even want these people in the camp, those who practice rebellion against my word, those who, 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 who rely on different gods and a different spirit in order to perform the task. And we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 18. See, we're going to, we're going to walk us, God is going to walk us down here today. As, a, as my boys, I say, it's about to get real. Because we're going to go into our houses and our closets today and see what sorcery is there and why we can't get it together. See, we've heard about Jesus, haven't we? That's what Galatians said. You've heard the teachings of Christ. You've seen the powers of Christ. But our lives are so messed up, and we don't know why. We, ha we have come to church. That's good, isn't it? But we don't know why. We just can't get it together. It's because we're being bombarded by this sorcery. But God said in, in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's start at verse 10 if we would. Deuteronomy chapter 18. <coughs> verse 10 says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh what? His son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or that useth divination or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a what? Charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are what? An abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from where? Before thee. Do you see? God says, these spell casters that are casting spells on you right now need to be out of the camp. Amen? Why? What's the, what's the end result of this thing? He said that, that, that I'm going to leave you. <laughs> you got to be, you, we have to stop practicing witchcraft. We have to stop and understand that we allow the sorcerer to use us, the ultimate sorcerer. Who is who? Satan, right? And God says, I don't even want them people in the camp. <laughs> he said, I don't want that spirit in the camp because my people won't be able to get it together because they'll be bombarded by witchcraft all the time. And you said earlier this, this, uh, this morning was you understood that the goal of the sorcerer was to get you to rebel against Christ. That's the goal. And if we find ourselves rebelling against the word of God, we are practicing what? According to the book of Samuel, right? For rebellion is as witchcraft. We got that? Now, you all right with that? If you're okay with that, we're going to go to this next point. Amen? amen. Old people, you say, can the church say amen? amen? All right. Now, amen means what? I agree. All right. Now, we're just going to stay inside of God's word because we have to figure out why we can't get it together, why our lives are so messed up, even after we know God. We have seen Christ. We have heard of Christ. Christ has been with us. We have walked hand in hand with him. We, he has touched us. He has changed our lives. He has shown us the power of a living God, but we still can't get it together because we're being bombarded on every side. You know how when, when, when in the book of Job, chapter 1, when, when, when a, a, a devil had to come ask the father for permission to bother Job, right? Matter of fact, Satan said, you build a hedge around him, I can't get to him, right? Are we living a life where Satan doesn't have to go by the father to ask permission? Is the sorcery so much that we come on in? 
We got a seat right there at the dinner table just for you, Mr. Sorcerer. We allow you to come in through everything, through the music we listen to, through the television we watch, all the things that we, everything we invite the sorcerer in. And so he just says, I, I really want to talk to you, Father. They already gave me permission. I'm out. And they want to know what's wrong with us. Because I know we get frustrated, especially when we, we take the time to read God's word and, and see what he asks of us. And, and we want to do what he asks us to do, but we just can't get it done because we let the sorcerer in. And remember the sorcerer's whole goal is to get you to rebel against the God. Amen? Amen. Now, now, he's got a couple of tools. And in 2012, all the, the sorcerer got some tools, doesn't he? Let's go to the book of, uh, uh, if we can, let's go to 1 John. Because there's some tools that the sorcerer uses. And, 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 and this is the main thing that he's going to focus on because from after today you will not be ignorant of his devices because that's what Christ said he said I don't want you ignorant of the, his devices this enemy is coming and this is how he's coming so if we know that we might stand a chance and might call on the power that can keep us from being overwhelmed by the enemy where are we going first John I'm gonna show you what he does and what he's always done and what he did in the garden is what he's doing now first John chapter 2 1 John chapter 2. This is what he does. This is how he comes. So we won't be surprised. Let's start at verse 15 of 1 John chapter 2. Christ gives us instruction here. He says, love not what? The world. So how, now, what, how is he coming? Now let's, let, let's look at him. Love not the world. So we know if Christ says don't love the world, we know the sorcerer wants you to do what? Love the world. So, okay, if we, first of all, let's find out, oh, the world. That's everything outside of God. Okay, so he's going to come at us like that. Now, he comes with another description here. He said, neither the things that are where? Because he said, if I'm any man love the, the, the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then verse 16 says, for all that is in the world. Now, get your pencil out, because he's going to list just a couple of them. He said, the lust of the flesh. So what's the sorcerer going to use? The lust of the flesh. Then he says what? And the lust of the eyes, that's two, and the pride of what? He said it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Those things we know he's going to use, okay? So when we, the lust of the eyes, take note, the tools of the enemy are always going to be wrapped into your senses. He's always going to try to stimulate your carnal side. And his tools, we, nowadays, everything's video. The lust of what? The eyes. You got, what, internet? What else you got? You got radio, television, music. Do you know this sorcerer is using food and drugs? We're going to get to that. Just drop that out there so you can say, man, I know he's crazy. He's using food and drugs as well. The sorcerer wants you to rebel against God. And with this visual aids that he has now, the internet, I want y'all to do something. There's an app, I'm sure it is. I haven't looked at it, but I know there is. An app you can download on your children's phones that will track where they go. Not physically, track what websites they go to. Why would we want to do that? Our children are looking at some lust of the eyes. I could, I mean, you know, I know you went one where, but it could be somewhere that's not quite there, but they're looking at a lot of things. So if children are doing, what do you think the adults are doing? Why? Because the sorcerer is overwhelming them with the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And what is the what other one was the lust of the flesh, too? He's getting us through these things because he is a magnificent sorcerer. He's dealing on up here while we're playing down here. The spells are real, people. The spells are real. And I'm talking about real spells. I'm talking about really incantations against you. They get up and they never, I mean, they get up in the mornings making sure I'm going to work. You know, you have agents, agents of Satan in your office. 
Oh, yeah, I, I, I can point him out. I can point <laughs> and sometimes we're used as agents of Satan in our office. That ain't a resounding amen to that. <laughs> Anytime we rebel against the Father, we're an agent of who? You know, we get the attitude and cuss somebody out at the office. I didn't read that in here. When we get it, when we, you know, we, well, they need to treat me better than this because I'm really proud of life. Who are we working for? But these are agents in the church. See, he had to come through the church. He had to come through the church. There's more sorcery going on in church right now, and people just sitting there mesmerized and don't know what happened. They threw the word out a long time ago. But the church, office, where else do you go? Store, school. Oh, school's just full of sort. Literal witches in your schools. And I'm not just talking about college. I'm talking about elementary schools. You have teachers who are certified sorcerers. They fit in real good because sorcerers made the curriculum. Okay, we'll leave that alone. I'm going to scare everybody today. Colossians chapter 3. God said, look, we are being bombarded, and we need to start fighting back. See, God just didn't point things out and leave us there so we can go home and hide in the closet. Oh, I'm so scared. Here comes the goober dust man. You ought to be afraid. You're, you're afraid that you lost your connection with Jesus because as long as you're connected with Jesus, that sorcerer doesn't have any power over you. But when's the last time we connected with him? You know, when he came, we talked about this morning that the state of Laodicea in church, how, how they were lukewarm and they didn't, they didn't really think they needed reproving or correcting. And when somebody, the Holy Spirit comes and tries to reprove them, they resist the Holy Ghost. When you resist the Holy Ghost, guess what you just accepted? The sorcerer. And he can do with you whatever he wants to do. And we just, in the wind. Amen? Everybody's been under the influence now. Everybody got a DUI. I mean, L-U-I, living under the influence. Now, we're going to Colossians. Come on. Colossians 3. Let's read 19. Here's one. Here's a command from God. You think the sorcerer isn't active? What, is, what was the institutions, the first two institutions established in the book of Genesis? Family, Family and the Sabbath. Where do you think he's coming? When you have a family, what is supposed to be the beginning of a family? Some call marriage. Oh, don't you think the sorcerer is trying to throw his dust on that? And God said here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, husbands do what? Love your wives and be not what? Bitter against them. In the Greek, the word bitter also means irritated with. Now, we're talking to the husbands just for a second now, or those who are thinking about being husbands. Because God started where? When he started correcting. He started with Adam. Because it's Adam's fault. So sisters, relax for just a minute. We'll get there. But just, I want y'all to hear this. He used Eve to get Adam. We read that, right? Didn't make Eve worse than Adam. He just used Eve. The sorcerer came and threw a spell on Eve, and guess what happened? Adam was gotten. Adam was worse because Adam saw the spell. Remember in Timothy it said, you know, Adam wasn't deceived. He knew what he was doing. But that spell got him, that lust of the flesh, and that lust of the eyes got him. He said, I can't leave this one. And he rebelled against the command of God. Now, since Satan started there. Why wouldn't he be doing that in 2012? It's works, doesn't it? Think about this. He, he, he told him, look, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And, and what has happened now? Let's go. You want to know? Let's go to, let's read David. Come on. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. We're going to see if Satan kept this, this M.O. up because it worked on Adam. And we're going to read about a great king, a king that God called the apple of his eye. And they worked on the king. Now, and the king didn't have internet. This king didn't have a television. This king, when he wanted to listen to music, he would say, look, y'all start playing. 
He didn't have to sift through the garbage. You know, you know how you have to turn the radio. He said, I don't want to hear that. I don't hear that. He said, play that. So it was a little different, but the sorcerer was still there. And he still used the same method as he used on Adam. We're going where? We're going to 2 Samuel chapter 11. Husbands, men, this is very dangerous. And we need to be covered by the blood. We need to always be covered by the spirit of God because if you're not, you will fall victim to this, period. There's no man has ever escaped this except Jesus and those who were covered by it. And we have an opportunity to be covered by him. Now look at, look at, look at, look at this. We're in 2 Samuel chapter 11. And we're just going to read verse 1 and 2. We know the history a little bit about this, but let's read it. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi. But what? David tarried still in Jerusalem. You know, wartime he was I'm just going to be at home and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon do we know what happened did it work on David what happened after this? A rebellion against God. Remember, that's what the sorcerer wants. He wants you to rebel. And that's what happened to David. David, because of this, the lust of the eyes caused a lie and a murder and a death, another death. The child died. Now, why would he change now? He hasn't. Brothers, he's using the same method. The same method as David felt. And you know why we say that? Because every commercial that is geared toward men have Bathsheba in it. And she's very, what? Fair to look upon. Have you ever seen a commercial with ugly people advertising something? I mean, what the world has told us is ugly because that's another, that's another topic. But what the mainstream or the, what the media and, and the magazines have taught us what is gorgeous, have you ever seen the opposite of that, trying to sell a product? Here, have a beer. No. But all men fall victim to this. Anybody ever watch a football game? Why do we need to see the cheerleaders? Are they playing? Oh, then the commercial comes and some more cheerleaders. They're just cheering for another product. And then they, they, they have commercials that you have to really wait till the end when the words come at the bottom to know what in the world they're selling. But they're selling Bathsheba. And what do men do? What did David do? When the Vic so he rebelled against God through this when the Victoria's Secret commercials come on. Now, you remember it was only 10 years ago when you could not advertise underwear on television. I'm not talking about in the 50s. <laughs> but, oh, when they passed that, hey, let that go. What happened to David? David started doing what? Started losing his mind again because the so that is sorcery. Do you know that sex is a big part of divination and sorcery? Just as much as drugs are, it is huge. And Sister, Sister Sherry, one day we're going to figure out how to make this bell peel presentation and keep it PG. There was some temple activity. It was some worship going on. And it had everything to do with every depraved acts of sexual counter that you can understand. The stuff that's normal now. Now, look at David. David watches television. David sees these women who he's been trained to think that this is what beauty is. And then that just keeps happening and keeps happening. And then what happens? Then David gets in his car. And the sorcerer is in the car, isn't he? He turns on the music. And then David hears about Bathsheba and the things that Bathsheba does. Stop me if I'm lying, okay? Now, then 
David gets to work, and there's a bunch of Bathshebas there. You know, they, 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 they dress like the people on television. But then David goes home. David has a wife. And David's wife doesn't look like Bathsheba. You know, when they first got married, you old, you know, beauties, old, you loved that person that you married for everything that that person was. But the sorcerer has convinced you that beauty is where? Out here. And so your focus is now out here. You walk home and, and your wife's been working at home all day or she's been at the office all day and she's tired. And she walks in and you're looking at her. Wonder why she didn't look like that. Wonder why she didn't act like that. Why can't I have a wife? And all these things start happening because the sorcerer is doing what? Throwing that, throwing that goo dust on you. And all of a sudden, what happens? Then the man gets distracted, doesn't he? David gets distracted, and he's starting to float away a little bit. Now, oh, and don't, don't think the devil hadn't been working on the wife. Because now, you know, now David is not paying any attention to her. Amen? And then what happens? Then the, the sorcerer comes up and says, you know, he ought to pay more attention to you. He doesn't satisfy your needs. He doesn't look at, after you. He doesn't. All that is happening. David's out here floating, looking for Victoria's Secret for some reason. Now, David's out of shape. All right, David is a bum, okay? But it doesn't matter because society has trained David to say, this is what I want. And beauty is on the outside and it has nothing to do with the inside. And now the, the wife is struggling with the sorcerer telling her that you deserve better than this. He ought to do better than this. You, you are a queen. I've seen talk shows like that. But you just tell your man he need to get it together. Really? Now, that's the sorcerer's way. Should a man pay attention to his wife? Yes. Should he, should he, he be there for her emotional needs? Yes. But David's out there with what? Chasing a pipe dream, a fantasy. And now she's left alone and unprotected from the sorcerer. Adam, if Adam had never left Eve's side, Eve would have been okay. Adam's out doing something else. So now, look, remember those two institutions, the family and the Sabbath? Now the sorcerer's in the house, and he's working on both of them. Kids don't stand a chance. They just gone. You know, when this happens, this kid's just nutty as a fruitcake. But now, look at this. This is what's going on. And, and, and we're irritated. The men are irritated with the women. The women are irritated with the men. And, and guess what happens? They, the, the sorcerer makes you break another command of God. Let's go to, if we were to uh, 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 Philippians chapter 2. Are we telling the truth this morning? Because all of these avenues that the sorcerer has, we're being bombarded and we're asking it to come into our heart and come into our lives and come into our house. There's some stuff on television now that should never be on anybody's anything. Oh, I remember. I mean, I'm not old. But I can remember when certain things you just couldn't do on television. You couldn't even do some things on HBO. Back in like the early 80s, uh, make sure that's after 2 o'clock in the morning. And who's up at 2 o'clock in the morning but those under the spell of the sorcerer? Amen? Y'all been out after two? A lot of Jesus going on after two o'clock? No, no, no. But, but, but look at this. He's, 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 he's coming in here to break up some stuff. Now, there's uh, uh, another command. Now the woman, the wife, is thinking about who? Herself. And the husband is thinking about what? Himself. Think that's godly? Oh, because it's got to be. It's got to be because we're all doing it. All of us are thinking and longing to please who? Ourselves, because what happened is that the sorcerer got in and convinced that self needed to be satisfied. Lucifer was just like that. So who is, this? who is the sorcerer we're talking about? We're talking about the devil himself. He said, I'm breaking up your happiness. I don't have a home, I'm breaking up yours. And I'm going to break your home up by letting you focus on yourself. I got to find myself. 
Where'd you go? <laughs> Look at us. We do that. Men do it. Women do it. I got to. I'm not satisfied with me. So I'm going to focus on who? Me. Do you know you'll be satisfied with yourself when you focus on somebody else? But the sorcerer doesn't want you to see that. Now let's see what, the, let's see what God said and how the sorcerer did. Philippians chapter 2. God says, verse 4, remember the sorcerer, his whole job is to what? Rebel, make you rebel against God. Okay, God just said something. Let's see what the sorcerer would say. God says, verse 4 of second, uh, Philippians chapter 2, he said, look not every man on what? Oh, no. You mean David can't look for his own gratification? Eve can't look for her own gratification. But why does the world tell us that we must do that? It's rebellion against God. He said, uh, he said look not every man on his own things, but every man also where? So in, especially in a marriage, your spouse's happiness should be what? Paramount. That's your priority, not you, David. And you get mad. Oh, look, she don't look nothing like that lady. You ever dated or went out with a, somebody who looked like that? The worst people on earth. <laughs> because that's not what you're looking for. That person is terrible. And your wife is not ugly. She just doesn't look like that. You know why? We've been so messed up. Why don't women wear four-inch heels? Because the sorcerer told them to. Why? Because you're too short. The sorcerer says you have to be 5'8". The sorcerer says those shoes will enhance body parts that you want to be enhanced to make sure you're, you work in the temple. We're going to get to that in a minute. See, they're women of the temple. They take care of temple things. They take care of the priest. And we're not talking about David's temple or Solomon's temple either. We're talking about the sorcerer's temple. And his whole world is his temple. How do you think them Kardashians do what they do? They're, they work in the temple. How many young men have been destroyed by them? I'm not talking about the ones they dated. I'm about the ones who look at them. Do you see now a little bit how this sorcery is working and how the minds are being altered just a bit and how homes are being broken up just because the devil uses the same trick as he used on David on brothers and he uses the same trick as he used on Miriam on sisters. Remember Miriam, Moses' sister, she got a little upset because she wasn't getting any credit. Same thing. That's what's on the magazines. You know, self one magazine is called Self. Self, I'm me. Lord, help us. Help us. Now, God said, don't worry about self, didn't he? He said, he said one thing, brothers, you need to realize and sisters need to realize about a woman. Let's go to 1 Peter. I want us to start understanding what God wants in a woman. Therefore, what his servants should want in a woman. Amen. And I don't read anywhere in this Bible that she had to be half naked walking down a runway. Matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. The exact opposite. You believe God has a, what he looks for in a woman? Because when, he, when Jesus talked about his church, he started talking about a, a calmly delicate woman, didn't he? He said, this is what I want. This is who I'm, my bride is going to be. And so all men who are servants of God, they look for that too, don't they? Amen? They should look for that. But those who have once known Christ and allowed that connection to be broken, now they're looking for something different, and they're breaking up the homes. Sisters, pray for your husbands. Pray the blood of Jesus over them, for the sorcerer is active. Amen? Amen? We're going to 1 Peter, right? 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're talking about a woman. 
not a female, a woman. There's a difference. We know there's a difference, don't we? You got females of every species. Now, we're at chapter 3, 1 Peter, let's start at 1. He said, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. See, you might be married to David looking for Bathsheba. So what should you do? Cuss him out? Nag him until he comes. You need to come home right now because you need, you, I'm going to check your cell phone. God said, sisters, don't ever get out of character. Don't ever not represent me. He said, I want you to love him like I love you. We got that so far? Let's keep reading. Now, while they behold your, what kind of conversation? What is Chase? What's a chaste conversation? It's a mild, holy, it's a, it's a pleasant, it's a, it's a, it's a God-driven conversation. Sisters, do we have those conversations with our husbands? Or with our, you know, ones we're trying to be husbands, trying to get to be husbands or something. Chaste conversation. This is what Christ is looking for in his women, okay? Let's keep going. Uh, 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 coupled with what? Fear. Fear what? Of God. He said, Lord, I, I want to do what you want me to do. This guy's kind of, God knows he's a knucklehead. God knows he's not what he should be. You act like you're informing God of something he doesn't know. But he says, yes, but I'm going to use you to get him straight. Do you know the power that women, wives have over husbands? For the good or for the evil? And God is talking about the good that wives will have. Now, he said, whose adorning, let it be that of what? Outward adorning. We're in uh, verse 3, uh, verse 3 of 1 Peter 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that of outward adorning, or plaiting of the hair, or of wearing of the gold, or of putting on the apparel. So, if you, young women who aren't married, are trying to get a husband by plaiting your hair, wearing gold, wearing certain clothes, you're not going to get a godly man. Because you want a godly man, don't you? You sure you want a godly man? Godly man's a lot different. Godly man requires a lot of things. He requires a godly woman. Amen? Amen. Now, so he said, look, uh, uh, the so if God says, I don't want you to be, you know, don't let that be your calling card, the hair and the gold. Don't let that be your, 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 your hook. Don't let that be that because, because that's not of me. Now, the cosmetic industry is a $2.50 industry. The hair industry, $5. Billions upon billions of dollars are spent on the outward adorning. Amen? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess if they didn't buy it, they wouldn't sell it. <laughs> why? The sorcerer told you to do that. God just said, don't worry about that. Now, God didn't say be raggedy and ugly and crusty face. He didn't say anything like that. Okay, so sisters, that's not what he's saying here. Because I've known sisters to do that. Oh, well, God said, I don't have to wear it. And they go all the way to the other end, and they're still as lonely as they were when they won't that end. But God said, don't, let, don't worry about those things. But the sorcerer has put out the makeup. The sorcerer has put out the gold. The sorcerer has put out the outward appearance. How do you know what to wear? The sorcerer told you. The little guys in France figured out and they send it over to you. You know what those little guys in France think of women? They don't like, they don't like y'all. They try, they try to be you, but they don't think of you much. And this is the spirit that causes, the sorcerer uses to make us dress like we do. Do we buy magazines? Do we say, ooh, that looks nice? Don't we? I mean, don't we? I mean, male and female, we're not. Who made the magazine? 
Can you be well dressed appropriately? Yeah. Yes, you can. So you, like, please, because I don't want anybody to think that Brother Shaw is saying y'all can just be raggedy and look terrible. No, that's not what God wants either. Amen. He doesn't want that either. But don't make your worth based on your outward adorning. adorning. Now let's look at verse 4. This is what God is looking for. But let it be the what? Hidden man of a heart. In that which is no corruptible, is not corrupt, corruptible, even the ornament of a what? There is not a magazine out here that says women have a meek and quiet spirit. That's not in Cosmopolitan. That's not in Essence. That ain't in Jet. Jet still come out? Okay. <laughs> or whatever self, whatever, I don't know what. GQ. <laughs> Good housekeeping. <laughs> Reader's Digest. Any of them. It doesn't tell you to be that. The sorcerer does. And we said, God said, have a meek and quiet spirit. Why don't we want to have a meek and quiet spirit? We're being influenced by the sorcerer. And the sorcerer says, you're not going to get what you want if you're meek and quiet. You need to stand up for yourself. How's that working out? You're pretty miserable. See, what we have to understand is this, that when we do what God says, we have the power of heaven working for us. It's not left up to you anymore to get your husband straight. You have the power of the Holy Ghost that will get him straight. Don't you think you want that power? Oh, but the sorcerer is in the house. And the sorcerer says, you know what, I'm tired of him. And that's all she has to hear. You ever heard anybody say, I'm done? Oh. So it's just clicking his heels. Hey, I got another one. <laughs> we, we all right so far? And, and, and he said, a meek and, and, and ornament with a, a, uh, of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of what? Great price. See, we're going to stop playing in just a minute. We're going to stop realizing something about Christ and our relationship with him. He says, I need to be in every aspect of your life if you if thing is going to work out for you. Christ is, should be in your house. Christ should be in your closet. Christ should be in your marriage. Christ should be in your kitchen. Christ should be in your car. Christ should be on your radio. All these things, we have to be wrapped around it because the sorcerer is everywhere. Amen? Third John, come on. I'm, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all getting upset now. I'm not talking about anybody. And I always tell people, guess who got this whipping first? Me. As God says, write that down. And I have to write it down. And he says, okay, now I want you to do this. I want you to say this. I want you to go here. I want you to go here. So I get beat up twice. Is that any consolation to y'all? Guess not. All right, third John. Third John. See, God requires something of his people. He requires a love for him. And we're going to get this sorcerer out of our lives because he's wreaking havoc. What did Galatians 3.1 talk about? It said you knew Christ. It's been presented to you, but you still don't obey the truth. All of us have heard the truth, have we not? And we're falling victim to the sorcerer. God said in, in John 3, in 3 John, I'm sorry, 3 John, it's only one chapter. Verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Amen? Even as thy soul prospered. Where do you think the sorcerer is coming at? Health. Jesus understood there was a direct connection between spirituality and your health. He went around healing people. He spent a lot of time in the book of Leviticus talking about eat that and don't eat that. He said, that's going to make you feel bad. Don't eat that. That's going to shorten your life. Don't eat that. And we argue with Christ about that now, don't we? You know, well, I can eat anything. I can pray over anything. You, you can pray over that rat all day. You can. Pray over it. Lord, thank you for the rat. I've never heard anybody do that before. But I've heard people pray over pork chops. God said, you know, leave that pork chop alone because 
its chemistry of its body does not match the chemistry of your body. There's nothing all of a sudden unholy about the pig. God said, don't call anything, what? Unclean that I have, yeah, I have determined clean. Now, God never determined that to be clean, but God made the swine for a reason. Thank God for the swine, amen? amen. Swine's the best vacuum cleaner since Hoover. That swine can clean up stuff, man. They can go around. If you got a big farm, get you some swine. Let them clean up everything. If you got a, if you got a fish tank, get you a catfish. You won't have to buy any algae uh, remover. That catfish will go in there and he'll start eating up everything and clean. Thank God for the catfish. God never told you. He said, but his chemistry is different from yours. That garbage he's eating, if you eat him, you're eating the garbage. It's going to stay away from that. So the sorcerer came in and said, God says you can eat anything. Just pray over it. You can pray over it. And pray God has mercy. We've all done that, haven't we? You can pray over high fructose corn syrup. You know what's funny about it? Corn should not even be in the whole thing. It's no corn in it at all. It started out as corn. This is with the end of whatever the chemicals wanted it. <laughs> high fructose corn syrup works on your liver like alcohol does. We want to know what's wrong with us now. But I don't drink. This stuff is killing us. So the sorcerer came through. The sorcerer has many agents in the food industry, doesn't he? His agents are so bad now, they patent life. Every seed is patented now. And so when you get that GMO seed, it's got a stamp, USDA Monsanto. <laughs> The sorcerer is working through that. And you know why the sorcerer works through the food? It's so you won't be in health and you won't prosper. How much does medicine cost these days? How much does medical, no, how much does health insurance cost? Don't know. Would, would like to have it, but it's way out of my budget. <laughs> I, I, it's just amazing. I was just thinking, Health insurance? That'd be nice. But you know what? God has an assurance that he said, you know what? If you would follow my lead on what you do with your life, you might be all right. I was just thinking this week. I was sick. You know, <coughs> <coughs> sounded bad, terrible, chills, everything. Took what God prescribed. You know, the... the the little herbs and the vitamin C's and all that. Hadn't seen the inside of a Walgreens except to buy a battery for my watch. Why? Because God says, I'm concerned with your health. I want you to be healthy. And so here's some things I suggest you take. Hang with me and you'll be okay. Do you see what the sorcerer, have you ever seen Walgreens logo? If you haven't, drive by. It's on every corner. It's a sorcery logo. It has the stars coming out of the, the pestle because it's about the spirit. It's about the sorcerer. Oh, one day we're going to, for people who had not been around for a while, we're going to do a nice little, that presentation we used to do about what's really going on and who works for who. And you see these logos, you like, oh, man, that's the sorcerer. Yep. And the sorcerer has no reason to make you healthy. So let's keep that in mind. He comes at the food too, doesn't he? He said, the stress that you have is killing you faster than anything. The lifestyle he is telling you to live, he has convinced you to live through the internet, the television. Do you know people don't live like that? There used to be a show years ago called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. At least they would tell you, this is how rich and famous people, this is not how you live, but this is how, now, they make people think they can do that. They making $9 an hour trying to live like that. And what happens? It's too much stress. You can't do it. How many jobs do you have to have? Lady bought a car. <laughs> one good one. <laughs> and guess what? And the sorcerer is taking those away. <laughs> there are no good jobs, are there? Used to be a good job. You could work at the plant. You know, Firestone or GM or International Harvester, and you could do well. You could retire from the plant. 
Wonder Bread. You could make Twinkies and get paid. The sorcerer said, no, we got to, we got to make sure everybody's suffering. And the stress level is killing us. Look at us. We're stressed to the max. What do you do when you're stressed out? People, a lot of people eat. Eat. Now, God said, I want you to be in health. Eating that is not conducive to good health. Why? Because the sorcerer has already been to the grocery store. He's on every shelf. You're so stressed out. Let's, let's, let's take an example. Uh, a, a married couple with children. Both of them working at, outside the house. You know, they're they humping to please. They got to get the job. Now, go to work, okay, people? Go to work, do your job, all right? Don't say, oh, the Lord told me to stay home. <laughs> go to work, or you're going to be hungry. Do your job. It's not, it's not a sin to work, okay? Not a sin to have a job, okay? But both of y'all are humping to please. Y'all like, ah, man, I got to get this, and I got to. And, and you both get home dog-tired. You don't have time to, to fix a homemade meal. You ran by the sorcerer's place, Mickey D's, Taco Bell, what else? Burger King, anything out there is a sorcerer's place. Sorcerer tried to throw some lettuce in there and you didn't want that. Huh? Now, you, now what happened? You, you got home with a bag of sorcery. And now you're consuming sorcerer's food. And you, if you're full, and that was all, that's what eating's about, right, being full. God said, if you give an appetite, put a knife to your throat. He said, you're not getting anything nutritious. And if you get home in time, your homemade meal consists of going to the pantry and getting a can of something. Young ladies, I cooked. What'd you do? I opened up a can, put it in a pot. Mm. Really? Okay. Oh, oh the, the nuke machine? That cancels everything nutrition. If you started out with an organic piece of broccoli and stuck it in a microwave, you just shot it and you're done. But you see, that's the lifestyle of the sorcerer. Amen? Everything, you got to be moved. I got, I got time, I got time. And then you get older and everything starts to hurt. And our children have type 2 diabetes at the age of 12. What happened to him? The sorcerer got to him. We let the sorcerer in our house. Oh, you see how off we might be? And yeah, we're Christians, though, right? Come on. Now, what we have to understand this is that, let me tell you a little bit about sorcery. Just, we, we're going to be, we, we just a minute. I know we got somewhere to do, somewhere to go. I want to read something to you. Because this television is internet stuff that's causing people to lose their minds and have a misconception about what life is. I looked up the top 10, last week's top 10 broadcast television shows. I looked up last week's top 10 downloaded music. Because, you know, our kids don't buy CDs anymore. They don't even know what record store is. Boss ugly buy. I ain't going to a record store. I go to what? Neek iTunes or Rhapsody or whatever else is out there. Oh, I don't know. There's a bunch of them out there. So I want you all to see this. The primetime broadcast last week, Sunday Night Football. Uh, number four was NCIS. Number five was NCIS Los Angeles. <laughs> and then we had some more football. Number seven was Dancing with the Stars. Number eight. Dancing over with the stars results. <laughs> and then, so cable network, uh, football, there's some show called The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the God of life. And then, then we have I Carly, I Goodbye. Anybody know what that is? That's on Nickelodeon. Oh, number four is Sons of Anarchy. Oh, that's, that's got some Jesus in it, I know. <laughs> then we have Gold Rush, NCIS, uh, Pawn Stars, and number nine and ten are WWE Entertainment. Watch how to beat the snot out of somebody. Um, now, now this syndic in syndication, because everybody's got cable or satellite or want it. Uh, uh, first thing was football game. Uh, number two, Big Bang Theory. Number three was Judge Judy. 
Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, two and a half men. You heard about the two and a half men guy lose his mind this week. Hey, 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 hey. See, that's, that's dangerous to give young people information. Yeah, he, he, he really thought he was going, he was going, he said, he, well, if y'all who didn't understand, who didn't see it, he, he came out and said, the, turn this dumb show I'm on off. It's a non-Christian show. It's full of lust. It's full of everything. You cannot be a Christian and watch this show, and you can't be a Christian and be on this show. He had met this guy. I saw his interview. This guy called the, oh, that guy's an interesting fellow. You know, he was just, you know, the, the guy he was with is one of them in-your-face guys. But he, he says all these things as if he lives in a vacuum. Well, TMZ picked up on it. And now it's all over everywhere. And he really did. He, he didn't lie. He told the truth. But now he's got to apologize because he realized either I'm going to go all the way with God or I'm going to go all the way with the sorcerer. And he's kind of doing this now. So we're going to pray for that young man, that he would go ahead and, and I know they're going to cut him. They're going to clip him. See, once you're in the sorcerer's world and you're a major player in the sorcerer's world, he's just not going to let you out without the power of God. So you're going to get clipped. Your money, your prestige, you're going to be. It's, it's some stuff going on out there in Hollywood that these young people who have been abused since they were this high are starting to say, I didn't know there was a way out. I didn't know there was a Jesus. My parents didn't teach me about God. My parents took me to Catholic Church. They didn't teach me about Jesus. And now they're starting to figure out there's a, there's a way out of this thing. They are miserable. But these are, all, these are the people that are on these shows. Now, uh, OT, let's see, it's football, 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 football. NCIS, Dancing with the Stars, X Factor. Okay, now let's look at something else right quick. Top 10 digitally downloaded songs by the Sorcerer. Okay? Now, we're just going to... This is a... Oh, oh no, it, uh, I was telling my son. This is a, there's an artist called PSY out of Korea or somewhere <laughs> called Gangman Style. Thank you. Yeah. Number one downloaded song. Sorcery. Number two, a guy named Bruno Mars. You know what this song is called? Locked Out of Heaven. Who's singing that song? Satan. Who's locked out of heaven? Satan. Who want to get kicked out of Revelations chapter 12? Come on, y'all. I know, I told you, we're going in the closets today. Number three, some lady named Rihanna. 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 <laughs> and you know what? Her, I saw this video. Because I looked at this, I said, her na her, you know, songs named Diamonds. I was like, oh, yeah, right. This video is so full of sorcery that it's just like, people watch this? I mean, the, the, with the smoke and the, and the, and the crucifixion and, the, and the, you know, the old the David picture of the, the God grabbing Adam's hand? Well, that, they have that too. They some tatted up dude and some tatted up lady and they, in this hand. It is pure witchcraft. But remember, the sorcerer, what he uses. So we're not going to read the rest of them. You probably, don't even, you probably never heard the rest of them because you all are good Christians. Some lady named Keisha, some dude named, I mean, group named Maroon 5. Um, who are these people? One More Night. Yeah, I bet I know what that song's about. Oh, they got Keisha sings a song called Die Young. Kesha, Kesha thank you. See, all right. Top 10 singles, Maroon 5, One More Night. Number two, Diamonds. Number three, Die Young. Uh, number four, Some Nights. And then Gang, whatever that style mess. <laughs> Locked Out of Heaven, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. That's by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Let Me Love You Until You Learn to Love Yourself. <laughs> That's the name of the song. <laughs> One, one, number nine is too close. Number ten is I cry. Mm -hmm. All developed, designed by sorcery. All, every last one of them. And then you want to know why you can't get it together. Why I can't get my relationship with Christ together. Because the sorcerer is in your life. You leave church and listen to uh, some of these songs. Locked out of heaven. Oh, diamonds, that's my jam. Mm. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, I heard about the Lord today. Turn it up. 
And that sorcerer says, ah, got you again. And then you go home and, and do they have a video channel? Because MTV doesn't show videos. <laughs> uh, some of the, some in, the in the morning? Okay. Okay, so now you got the visual of all these people. You don't need that. All you need is a computer and YouTube. Let me tell you something about YouTube. Ask God to help you in your filtering of things. You got some stuff on YouTube will send you straight to hell. Okay? I don't think that could be more blunt. No. I, I, I mean, in the name of the Lord. Because it'll tell you, Jesus told me that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. <laughs> and you got 7 million views. You better worry about what Jesus really said. And you know what? You want to find out what Jesus said? Why don't you open his book from time to time? And let that sorcerer, you know, have to back up a little bit. Turn to the book of Psalms. We'll get out of here. Book of Psalms 55. What's the solution to the sorcery? There's two things we're going to just mention to you. The solution to the sorcery. In, in Isaiah 55, I mean, uh, uh, Psalms 55, I'm sorry. Psalms 55. Locked out of heaven. Can you believe that? Man got a song that said, locked out of heaven. And Taylor Swift. Yeah, she's swift all right. Bless her heart. Right. And it's unfortunate that even some of these artists don't really realize what's going on. They've been trained, and they've been possessed by the sorcerer so long, they just think they're just doing it. But some of them, the big ones, they understand what they're doing. And they say, I give myself to the, to the sorcerer. I give myself to this power. Uh, what the, what's the young man that went crazy? Chris Brown. You, you play around that neighborhood long enough, and the sorcerer just takes you. See, the devil gives nothing for free. He takes you. Some of these artists say, I don't want to go to sleep at night because they talk to me. Man said, they talk to me. I said, who, who is, who? The demons talk to me. They won't let them sleep. What Michael Jackson had to do, take some kind of crazy drug. He said, they talk to me. I can't, because you are in the sorcery land. That's what happens in sorcery land. See, you, you see them, oh, they look like they got a lot of fun and power and, and cars. Man, these people are tormented. And what do our children emulate? What do our parents, what do, uh, what do we want to be like? I want to be like them. I want to live like that. At what cost? Psalm 55. Let's read verse 16 and 17. We're looking for a solution today. As for me, I will call upon who? And the Lord shall do what? Evening and morning and at noon. Will I what? Pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So what's your first line of defense? Pray. In the morning, pray. Read. Spend time in the morning with your family. Pray with them. Talk to them. Open up his word. Evening and morning. In the morning, when they, before the ha people leave the house, there should be some protection already praying. Because the sorcerer is right there. The sorcerer is standing next to your bed. It's just that, that big angel God sent wouldn't let him kill you. Oh, you don't think he's trying to snuff you out before you know Jesus? Who woke you up? It wasn't the alarm clock. God said, get up. And you got up. So in the morning, say, Lord, thank you. Praise him. In the, at noon, I know you might be at work. I ain't say you got to get up and jump on the chairs and start waving your hand. I'm just saying, pray again. Say, Lord, thank you for the morning. Help me do your will. Help me do what you want me to do. Help me to represent you. Lord, pray, I pray for my children. I pray for my husband. I pray for my wife. Protect them, Lord. Send your angels. And then in the evening when you get home, after that long commute, you should be thanking the, thanking the Lord. Lord, you got me home. That devil tried to kill me on Thomas Street. He tried to take me out here. But you got me home, and I thank you. And on the way home, you didn't have Bruno Mars blaring in your ears. Well, you shouldn't have Bruno Mars blaring in your ears. Turn Taylor Swift off. Tain, what, Rihanna, Nuana, and the rest of them? Turn them off. You know you can download the Bible on the MP3? <gasps> oh. You know, I read the top ten downloaded. I, I didn't see the Bible. 
Why? Because a sorcerer is making sure you don't hear the word of God. Do you know that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, even Satan himself? So when, 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 when the sorcerer comes and now you have eyes to see, you see him come and just say, Jesus. And the sorcerer gets a little uncomfortable. And he'll leave. And before he leaves, I'll be back. Because you're going to mess up. You're going to lose your connection because you're going to be tempted and you're going to fall because you forgot Jesus. So we pray, right? James chapter 4. We, gonna, we, got, we, we got things to do today. James chapter 4. My question to you this morning is this. Have you heard the truth? Now that, that's not, necess- not, not really a rhetorical question. Have you heard the truth as it is in God's word? Now you have the ammunition to fight the sorcerer. Now you know where to go. When that sorcerer comes to you, David, and starts talking about Susie at, at the work. Because you know the sorcerer will send Susie to make sure everything you thought you imagined, your fantasy world, will come through the door. Yeah. And what you, you know, and you know, you, you got some Jesus in you, so you're not really just openly doing it. But you start praying. And you say, Lord, help her. Because she doesn't know. She's being used to. And when the sorcerer comes and speaks to your sisters and say, you know, so and so and so and so and so and so. You say, you know what, I think I'm going to call the name Jesus. Because I, I, I heard that sorcerer before. And when the children, when you're, when you're out there in the schools and the sorcerer comes next to you, let's go do this. I don't worry about that. We don't have to do that. Uh, why don't you see my new bracelet? Uh, just say, hold on, Lord, help me. Because I'm being bombarded by this witchcraft. I'm being invited to places I know I shouldn't go. I'm on the phone talking to somebody my parents don't want me to talk to. I'm sending texts I shouldn't be sending. If you can't send the text in front of your folks, something's wrong with that text. Amen? Amen. If you can't have that conversation in front of your family, your your elders, (coughs) (coughs) something might be wrong with that. What do you think? Now, I know our children don't do some of that crazy stuff. They they, they have some crazy stuff out there. We pray they don't. Amen? But somebody does that we're going to run into. Somebody's little girl, when I say little girl, she's 15, 16, is sending lewd pictures over the internet. Somebody we know does that. So we got to give them what we learned today. And in verse chapter 4 of James... And we're going to read verse 7. After we pray, we do what? It says, submit yourselves. Therefore, to who? See, we know how to submit. We've been submitting to the source for a long time, so we're kind of used to the feeling. But we need to submit ourselves to God. And he said, resist the devil. And what will happen? The sorcerer will flee. But you've got to resist it. First, you've got to submit. And so when you submit to God and the Holy Spirit comes and starts talking to you and starts making suggestions about your life, just follow and say amen. Lord, I got a word, amen. That's it. No discussion. You might want to get that out of your house. Amen. You might want to turn that off. Amen. And he gives you the power to do it. Amen. How about this food thing? Very important. This food thing, very important. It's killing us. This medicine is killing us. Almost 300,000 people die in hospitals. Oops, by accident. A year. There weren't that many people died in the Vietnam War. Oops, wrong medicine, sorry. How many of us on medicine? Don't have to raise your hand. You know what the biggest drug in the world is? How many of us on sugar? On sugar. If you don't think you're a sugarholic, don't eat nothing sweet for a week. <laughs> See, yeah, I mean, you know, read everything. If it says sucrose, any O-S-E, it's a sugar. Uh, if it says high fructose, <laughs> if it says anything like this, 
Don't eat any sugar for a week. And I'm going to show you what withdrawal from heroin is. It's easy to get off heroin and sugar. Heroin and sugar. Why? You can buy sugar anywhere. You at least got to go to the seedy part of town to get heroin. <laughs> we got to come up, people. We got to come up. And God wants us to come up, doesn't he? We can be what he wants us to be. Not just for us, but you know how many people we can help? Because it's not about us, is it? We can help some people, boy. Some people are struggling. These young people are growing up saying, I didn't know about Jesus. These old people say, that was a false Jesus I was looking at. Man, my church is, man, I didn't know. I thought, oh. and you're going to be walking and say, this is what my God says. Let's walk in his way. Amen? Amen. It's going to be beautiful, isn't it? Go ahead and claim the victory. Don't worry about it. God said, I said, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to help you. I'm not going to leave you alone. Just ask me. And when, when the sorcerer comes, I'm the only one that can tell the sorcerer to leave, so stay with me. What did Christ do? Man, every time that sorcerer came, he said, get thee here, Satan. Really? He said, I wor worship God, him only should I serve. And it helped. Did Christ go around and say, uh, leave, oh, death and dumb spirit? See, they thought it was a medical condition. It was a demon possession. When, when, when he walked in, and the man who had been crippled all his life, and he said, get up and walk, that was a spirit that left that man. That crippling demonic spirit left it. See, we're going to keep coming. We're going to learn a little bit more about what's really going on so we can be better Christians. We can be better servants of God. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, once again, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before your most holy throne thanking you again for your message today, your word today, Father. We read in your book, Lord, that, that you are able and more than willing to help us conquer this sorcerer. We ask for deliverance from evil today. These inclinations that we have to embrace sin, Father, we ask that you would deliver us from, the, us from that. Lord, that you would relieve us of the stress and the pressure that this Satan has put on us. Lord, that you show us the good and the right way and give us the strength to obey. Lord, so we can be rid of this mess, that we can go on and do what you would have us to do. Thank you for your word, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.